let's understand node voltage analysis and some more concepts in this video so here they were asked to solve for vx and ix by node voltage analysis so before we actually solve by node voltage analysis let us understand some concepts related to it so we'll again take back how do we find vx and vx vx and ix in the upcoming slides so let's neglect this and with respect to circuit let us understand by the end of the video you should know what is node junction branch how do we apply node voltage analysis how do we find voltage and current currents in this case vx and ix node what is node node is defined as a connection point between two or more elements so between two or more elements so which are the nodes here which forms a connection of two or more elements so we have marked them here in red dots let us name them from a to f let us see what is a junction a junction is defined as a connection point between three or more elements is defined as a connection point between three or more elements so you can see node is within a junction so out of these nodes you have to identify which all or which are the junctions i hope this will not be difficult that point b is one of the junction so let's see the other junction which is there so let me help you out in understanding it so let's see point a we have two ends two elements 28 and r1 and b as you know we have three elements r1 r3 and r2 so it's a junction within a node c r3 and 7 it's a node now before we go to d e and f can we say this the circuit and this circuit both are same they are same electrically but what is the difference what difference do you observe they are same but what what do you observe what difference do you observe here between f and d e, there's a line e and d there's a line this line represents connecting wires whereas in this diagram we have removed the connecting wires and connected each end of 28 2 and 7 directly without help of connecting wires thus we can say that f and d which was a node now all these three forms one junction holistically so we have two junctions highlighted in yellow color right so we can say as say that junction as either f e or d so i think we have named it as point d so let us see this further so we have only two junctions which are b and either d either e and f so we have named them as b and d so we have two junctions here so the circuit can also be written in the syntax they are still same electrically so 7 and 28 are in series and then 2 ohm is between two junctions and then 1 and 7 are in again series so the circuit is still same electrically this will help you to understand further that's why we have rewritten in, in this syntax now let us see the third element branch what is a branch branch is defined as the connections or the path the number of paths or number of connections between junctions so here we have two junctions so between these two junctions how many path one like one can observe or how many connections are there between these two junctions between b and d so one can observe that we have three paths right so we have named them as i1 i2 and i3 we have three currents but why have we named or why have we addressed the currents downwards why is it flowing from b to d not from d to b right so let us answer that so here we should assume one as reference point that is black color as got ground potential and the rest in this case only b the other node which is there or the other junction which is there has highest potential right or positive terminal and we know that current flows from positive to negative so we have assumed as point b as positive and we assumed the point d as negative thus the current flows from positive to negative thus all the currents in this case all the three currents i1 i2 and i3 are flowing from assumed positive to assumed negative right so we have three branches we assume all the currents are leaving the junctions if we apply kcl at point b we can say as current entering is equal to current when we analyze with respect to current entering is equal to current leaving one can write zero is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 right so what we have seen we have seen two junctions we have seen three branches we have assumed point b as positive we have assumed point b as negative or ground potential and in general how do we say that how, how can we find the number of unknowns so the unknowns by no, by nodal the unknowns are voltages so how many voltages are unknown how do we how do we find so number of junctions minus 
right? So number of junctions in this case is two, two minus one. That is only one unknown. That is at point B. What is this minus one? So minus one is your reference potential. So we know at reference your voltage will be zero, right? So we always neglect one of the junctions. That is ground potential. So if I have three junctions, I can I can say that one is ground potential. Thus we have two unknowns. Similarly, if we have four junctions, we can say that one is reference. Thus we have three unknowns. It's in general. We'll see how does it changes with respect to numericals. So point E is negative or gro grounded, and we have only one unknown that is V1 at the top. And we always assume currents are leaving from positive, and it is traveling through the branches and hitting the ground potential. In this case, at point D. What exactly is V1? V1 is nothing but when we connect a multimeter such that the positive is connected at the top. The negative is connected to the ground, as indicated in that point D. What does that voltmeter read? It reads V1, right? What exactly is V1? V1 is voltage of across 2 or 4 or 28. How is it? What is it exactly? Let us understand. These two are in series. That is 4 and 28, right? And this entire branch, first branch, is in parallel with 2, right? And again, first branch, second branch, and the third branch. All three branches are parallel. Thus, we know in parallel, the voltage remains same with polarity that means at top it is positive for all the three branches and for all the three branches at bottom it is negative that value is v1 how do we calculate it's very easy using a multimeter but how do we calculate and get the right answer let's observe so here i have just assumed that when we neglect the other two branches how can we how can i write the equation for i right we need the correct equation for i1 so let's see that how do we write the equation for i1 this you need not do always I'll we'll I'll understand the concept. Then I'll tell you. Uh, we'll just based on that uh, concept. We'll we'll uh, follow a method. How do we incorporate the equation for I1 in a simplified manner? Now we mark the polarity across resistance by passive sign convention, plus minus. Now I1 is traveling in anti-clockwise. Again, I please I, I I would repeat. We have assumed the current leaving a junction because of that current is traveling in. Anti-clockwise direction, and because of that, we will be applying K value in anti-clockwise, right? So here, this drop highlighted with arrow mark, that is V1. The red indicates positive, black indicates negative. So how do we write the equation for K value? 4I1 plus 28 minus V1 equal to zero. Now we want I1. I1 is equal to V1 minus 28 by 4. I repeat, this you need not, we need not do anyone need not do this every time. So once you understand the concept. Later on, we correlate with a shortcut. You can always use that method later on. Not this. This is just concept. So let's see. Let's see how can we understand this. So by Ohm's law, we know I is equal to V by R. V is the total voltage in that branch, in the first branch, divided by the total resistance in the same branch, in the first branch. Right. So let's understand this. Let's take an example. Or let me explain this equation first. So you can see. The current I one is traveling from red dot. The current I one is traveling from red dot. Red indicates positive. Thus, V one is also positive. As the current travels, it hits which polarity of twenty eight first? Positive. Thus, it is negative in the equation. Right. Next. In the first branch, you can see in the first branch, which all resistance can you observe, or which all passive elements do you observe? It's only one. That is four ohm. So divided by the total resistance in the same branch or in the first branch, that is four ohm, right? So let us take one more example. So what if if we have two ohms in series? Then how do we write, right? So the answer is V one minus twenty eight by six. How did we get six? Four and two are in series. Thus it is four plus two. That is six ohm. Now what if if we have eight ohms in series now? So in first branch we have two voltage sources and two resistances. Now how do we how does one incorporate this? The current I one hits which polarity of eight volts first? Negative. Thus we write it as positive. So it is V one plus eight minus twenty eight whole divided by six. So you can see once you understand the concept you can write the equations directly, right? So now let us go back to our original question and write down the equation for I two. Now current I two is traveling from positive of V one. There's no other voltage sources, right? So V1 divided by 2 would be the right answer. Similarly, I3 
in third branch the total voltage the current is traveling from v1 v1 is positive and the current hits which polarity of 7 volts first the current is in the positive terminal thus it is negative here and what all resistance are there in third branch only one one ohm so divided by one right so now if i apply kvl sorry if i apply kcl at v1 we write that as 0 is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 so what all the equations you have written below for i1 i2 and i3 substitute them in the above equation add them and you can see here we have only one unknown which is that one unknown v1 as we discussed earlier the number of junctions are 2 thus the number of unknowns would be 2 minus 1 one unknown and what is that one unknown here v1 so if we solve for v1 we get the answer as 8 volt so if i keep a multimeter positive probe at the top negative probe at the bottom we get the answer as plus 8 volts right so this is how we solve now when i substitute the value of v1 for i1 i2 i3 the answers are minus 5 4 and 1 ampere respectively so i1 is flowing downwards i2 is flowing downwards i3 is also flowing downwards and you can see there are 5 minus 5 4 and 1 now what does this minus 5 indicates what does this plus 4 indicates what does this plus 1 indicates so minus 5 indicates that the current direction that we have assumed it's not wrong it's actually flowing in the reverse direction practically when we build the circuit and what does 4 ampere indicates plus 4 that means current is flowing in the same direction practically also and what does 1 amp indicates the current is flowing in the same direction practically also right so let's solve for vx vx is voltage across 4 ohm so by ohm's law we know v is equal to i into r so r is 4 how do we find the current or what which current is flowing through 4 ohm it is i1 that's correct but can you observe i1 hits which polarity of vx first it hits negative polarity you can observe i1 hits negative polarity of vx first thus the right equation for vx would be or the right equation for i with respect to vx would be minus i1 into 4 where minus is substituted because the current hits negative of vx first and the value of i1 is minus 5 so the answer is plus 20 so when i connect a voltmeter of that polarity across 4 ohm that is plus at the bottom and negative at the top i get a drop of 20 volt in that multimeter next let's find ix now one can observe the current i3 and ix both are flowing in same direction thus we write the equation as ix is equal to i3 that is equal to 1 ampere now let us say that the question is asked to find i y right so you can observe in the second branch the current i2 is flowing downwards right but i y is flowing upwards so these two are in opposite direction one can observe current assumed the, the, one can observe current assumed i2 is traveling opposite direction with respect to i y thus i y is minus of i2 which is minus 4 ampere. Thank you.